and peace to those. May he rest in peace. Gracious and loving God, we do praise and bless your holy name. As we enter into the waning of our summer, we are grateful for the wonders of your creation and our ability to share in them. May the recreation, recreation, that we have experienced these past few months now energize us for your work on earth. Bless the work of our Township Council, may all that they do be in pursuit of justice and peace for the inhabitants of Gloucester Township. Continue to bless our Mayor, his administration, in their efforts to better the economic life and pursuit of happiness for their citizens. Continue to bless and protect with safety our police officers, EMTs, firefighters, who often place themselves in danger to protect us from danger. Encourage us, O Lord, to think of others as brothers and sisters in Christ, that as a family we can live in harmony with each other. We ask our prayer this evening in the name of your Son and the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This regular meeting of this Township Council is being held in accordance with the scheduled meetings of the Township Council established and adopted by the Township Council, which scheduled, designated the time, date, and place of this meeting. Adequate public notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. We are using an electronic amplifying and recording device in order to obtain a clear and audible record. We request all those wishing to speak be recognized to state your name and address directly to the microphone. The recording device to be solely utilized by the Township Clerk's Office and shall be the official record of the Township Council meetings. May I have the roll call, Madam Mr. Hutchison. Present. Mr. Schmidt. Present. Mr. Seiler. Mrs. Strada. Here. Mrs. Winters. Here. Mr. Mercado. Present. Mr. Beatty. He is on vacation. Mr. Lecker. Here. Deputy Chief Harden. Here. Mr. Carver. Here. Mr. Campbell. Here. Here. We have a resolution on the agenda to go into closed session for two matters. One is a workers' comp issue, and the other one is litigation for a performance bond. Uh, I estimate a time of 20 minutes in closed session. Is there a, uh, a motion to go into closed session? I'll make that motion. Thank you. I will put it on. 
was. I'll double check it, but it sounds fishy. Yeah, it's in there. I don't recall no being a stab. So, but I'll have. I'll, hey, yeah, listen, well, something, something could have happened. I just don't recall. But if it didn't reach any significance, that I would make a record. So there are some things going on. In the development. Well, okay, driving cars, I guess there was an altercation with him and somebody else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Being but, full of his friends have been up and down the street. That was, I believe, the police were arrested.
exactly. Not uh, he's grumpier. It's in his old age. It's grumpiness, and then he just gets shorter. That's exactly what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's great. Well, I'll tell you what. What's frustrating? Since he's had it, he's had it, it gets worse. He has no feeling in his fingers. And it's very unsensitive. And it's frustrating because I mean, like, when we go out to eat or something like that, and I just he has a hard time like opening it in. Uh, a pack of salt or a sugar rather and stuff like that. That's what that is. He can't he has a hard time feeling it. And it's frustrating, right? Because it's it's numbness. And that came from that circuit in his neck and all this and it's it just gotten uh, degeneratively worse with some of the issues with his pocket you know when he had the thing. So it's his fingers and he gets frustrated with that. So what you're saying right there makes perfect sense. You'll see him with, and I know this, yeah. and, and fixes that he's trying to open them. That's what that is, and it gets frustrating. He can't feel how to get, and uh, it's even, and it's all really tell him, like, I just, I, we got a, 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 a this stuff, but David, with his, we have belts, it's called myself, belts, it's a belt, or a belt to it, but it looks like a dress belt, you really can't tell it is. David has no fun in motor skills. It's a belt and it's a belt and it looks because again, the simplest things that we take for granted, again, sometimes a hard time. But that's what it is with that frustration. And um, and it's just gotten a little bit. Yes, he, he thinks you're one of the easiest going. Love, you know what I mean? Like you know because something bothers you and all that. You know, I know I know.
work. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Move out, then that, you're going to push for that one. Let me tell you, you know what he says? I understand. <laughs> I understand. I understand. <laughs> like, and I, I'm sure you get it. He's like, first place, I don't have to worry about money. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, exactly. You imagine yeah, what that's exactly. like. You know, he's oh, not, yeah. I not have to worry about bro. They just, you know, yeah, they just expect you to bring it to the kids past the walls, you know, and if it's yeah. a piece of cake, you don't have to go bang it. Mm -hmm. Bang it. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I feel the evaluation that you have with someone who has a lot of conditions. And he says, there is a lot, yeah. yeah. That you got to put on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you put up with them, yes. Mm -hmm. But I think you're also watching people. You know what? You don't get them in some ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Sort of. I think there was a train that was at the time. Sure, sure, sure. sure. No, no, it is. Yeah, yeah. He said he gets plenty of help from the tire guy. Oh, yeah. You know, he's like, hey, oh, yeah, I'll go do him. So that's not bad. To, you know, between St. Paul's and Stone Harbor and there, you know. Yeah, he's Yeah. Yeah, that's not a bad gig. And then, just, then the streets roll up in the wintertime, you know. Right. <laughs> That's what you do. Exactly, yeah, sure. Uh, it's the opposite of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you have to hold the other one. So, you know, you know, look at Yeah. 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 Yeah.
now as far as getting upgrades and infrastructure, electric, power, communications, and all you know, that stuff. Uh, you know, they're really because they're shutting that whole area down. Well, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he's she she doesn't want to know, right? Yeah. 
Clerk has a roll call again. Mr. Hutchison? Present. Mr. Schmidt? Present. Mr. Estrada? Here. Mrs. Winters? Here. Mr. Mercado? Present. Uh, on both items, the workers comp and also the bond performance uh, litigation are both unresolved. I will now open the first public portion um, and we will adhere to uh, the rules of order uh, for our council meeting. The first public portion will be limited to agenda items only uh, for a total of 15 minutes. So you want for the first public portion? Mr. Vice President, may I ask a question? I believe that there were some e-gov questions. Uh, I don't, I, I know that we had discussed them previously as to some that would be came to the agenda, they would be brought up in all, all three are unrelated to the agenda. Thank you. We'll close the first public portion. Proclamation. Proclamation supporting the drive soap over get pulled over 2015 statewide crackdown. Whereas approximately one third of all fatal crashes in the United States involve drunk drivers, and whereas impaired driving crashes cost the United States almost 50 billion a year. Whereas 27% of motor vehicle fatalities in New Jersey in 2013 were alcohol related, and whereas an enforcement crackdown is planned to combat impaired driving, and whereas the summer season and the Labor Day holidays, particularly in particular, are traditionally times of social gatherings which include alcohol, and whereas the state of New Jersey Division of Tra Highway Traffic Safety has asked law enforcement agencies throughout the state to participate in the drive sober or get pulled over 2015. Whereas the project will involve increased impaired driving enforcement from August 1st through September 7th, 2015. And whereas an increase in impaired driving enforcement and a reduction in impaired driving will save lives on our roadways, therefore be resolved that I do, the mayor, mayor of the township of Gloucester, and I board the meeting president of the township council, declare our support for the drive so for a difficult over 2015 statewide crackdown from August 21st through September 7th, 2015, pledge to increase awareness of the dangers of drinking. Thank you. Uh, we have our consent agenda. Uh, any council member that would like to remove anything from the consent agenda, please speak up. Hearing none, do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. On the question, roll call, Matt. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Strato? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. McConnell? Yes. We have three GT Gov access. Uh, questions, all from the same individual. i uh, read the first one. This is from Mr. Peter Heimball from 2 Morning Star Court in Sickleville. Uh, when will Gloucester Township's audited financial statements be made available to the public? I believe this was uh, asked at our last meeting, and Mr. Cardis, uh, those audited financial statements uh, have not been made available yet. They have not yet. I believe they will be transferred to the township and distributed Second question. Uh, I noticed that the RCA Substance Abuse Treatment Facility wrote some threatening legal letters and is appealing to the Zoning Board regarding its decision. What are the possible outcomes of this appeal? What are the next steps RCA could take after this appeal? Uh, this is a litigation matter, Mr. Carlin. Yeah, I understand that. that. Yes, I understand that uh, right now they're making an appeal before the Zoning Board of Zoning Issues. But even above that, I understand their application before the planning board has now been appealed. They've initiated litigation, and I believe they've initiated litigation in the federal court. I'm not sure the nature or the full extent of that. My only comment would be not being familiar with it. I would caution uh, any director or member of council to comment uh, on anything involving their matters of litigation, specifically with the planning board and their current appeal before the uh, zoning board. I believe that's going to be heard uh, Wednesday evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Carlin. And the last question, Mr. 
Heimball. I was surprised to note that this meeting's agenda does not have a resolution to vote to approve the tax abatement for Simon and the New Outlets. What is the status of this tax abatement? Uh, they have. I have a response from Mr. Walker. I, I also have a response to that. Uh, they have submitted a preliminary, a preliminary information for a five-year commercial tax abatement. That is. Uh, allowed by our ordinance and it's, it's in conjunction with our state statutes and procedures. They have 60 days, the owners of the property, after completion or first occupancies to file the final application for the abatement. Uh, at that time, he'll review the abatement, he'll provide a final assessment. When I say he, our tax assessment, Mr. Palumbo, um, he'll provide a final assessment on the amounts of the building. Keep in mind, the abatement uh, if approved by council, is only on the new the construction, not the land. Uh, the abatement will be over a five-year period. It will start the calendar year January of 2016 and run to uh, December uh, 31st of two, 2020. And it's in increments: zero the first year, 30, 50, 70, 90, and then the whole full 100% after year five. Uh, in addition to that, the land that they're currently paying taxes on. Uh, for the fiscal year, the county year 2015, the taxes on that parcel of land are $390,159.87 compared to the farmland tax of $1,150 per year. So uh, we're getting the full freight on the land. Uh, again, they do have a right to submit a tax abatement uh, request, and that will go before council. It'll have to be approved by council uh, on two readings, so it'll be in ordinance. But once again, they have 60 days after the completion of the project to submit that. All right, we'll go to our second public portion. Uh, once again, just a reminder, uh, we will follow the rules of order for our second public portion. That is allotted uh, 30 minutes for the public portion. It could be on any item, and each speaker is limited to five minutes. Is there anyone for the second public portion? Mr. Palladoro. Good evening, Council Ray Palladoro. Ariel. Good evening. Um, just a, I guess a taxation question with the uh, tax abatement. You have a premium outlet mall, which uh, I guess everyone has observed was a very uh, festive and uh, successful opening. The place was mobbed from the time it opened till probably right now. And premium outlet, premium stores, premium goods, and premium prices. The place is booming and very successful very quickly. So tell me why it is that a outlet owner is charging retail stores a premium price for premium that for stores that are selling premium goods at a discounted premium price why a tax abatement is even necessary for what looks to be an extremely profitable venture where where does that help the taxpayers of Gloucester Township because if success should result in something helping the taxpayers other than the land but where does that help the taxpayers to even offer and they can ask What's the benefit to the taxpayers? Does it offset any school taxes? Does it offset anything besides the parking area for the residents around the premium outlet mall? Well, uh, to answer your question, uh, they are allowed, they are committed to submit an application. Uh, it's an ordinance. Uh, and the figure I quoted when it was farmland assessed for $1,150 for 64 acres of land. And the township is able to bring in three hundred and fifty, excuse me, three hundred ninety thousand. Excuse me, Council President. Would you mind the clock stopping while you're speaking? Okay, sure. Thank you. So there's a three hundred eighty-nine thousand dollar benefit to the residents of Gloucester Township. After that, for the five-year tax payment, uh, again, that's part of our ordinance. They have a right to submit that application. Will be reviewed um, in my conversations with the tax assessor most of these things uh, when they come to him they 
they're, they basically, it's something that's approved by municipalities, but this serves as an incentive uh, for them to locate their business, their outlets in our township. Okay, they're here, they built, they're open, they're making money. I don't see where the benefit to the township is for that tax abatement. They've already made their commitment, they're already making money. The township has deferred the making money off of those retail stores in doing so. If, if I'm going to ask a minute question and be served a three-minute answer, you're infringing on, the, on my time and the public's time. I, I'm getting the new the hardball thing from the comments that were made last time. And the 15-minute maximum, that's all good. If you feel comfortable and happy doing it, that's good. But when a real good matter comes into this council chambers, good luck with that 15 minutes. And if you really think that that's appropriate and you think that you're a friendly body by doing so, more power to you. I hope you feel better. Please continue. Okay, so I ask about I the. That's, that's my response. I don't know if anyone else wants to I, answer. I would like to respond, and, and I like the, the exchange. I just, just kind of weirded it out by. Regarding to the abatement. Yeah, I'll answer it. Um, sure. I'm going to vote in favor of the abatement when it comes to that. I have no problem with it because it's a wonderful thing that you can attract this type of economic, economic development to the town. And for you to sit there, right, and, and stare me in the face and say that you don't understand how there's a benefit means that you don't want to see the benefit. I, my wife and I walked by there uh, on Sunday, and she couldn't believe that this was located in Gloucester Township. And the, the economics of this are incredible for the town. So why, why should we deny them that which anyone would be afforded simply because it's so successful. It doesn't make sense. If this was an auto mechanic, a garage, if it was the Pep Boys, anyone could apply for it. It may have been a deciding factor why they're here. It could have been. And, and just that's the very nature and purpose of the state law that was adopted, I can't tell you how many years ago, to allow municipalities to take advantage of that incentive uh, to bring in and make development. You have to appreciate before premium outlets came in, they did their due diligence and study, and I'm sure they were aware that this township had an incentive program by adopting an ordinance to implement the state statute, which then attracts major developments to this area rather than Washington Township or somewhere else or other communities that might not be offering that. So that's understood. And those, and those other communities have the abatement program. I got a phone, program. I got a phone call from the solicitor of the neighboring town the other day. And he called me up and he said, Dan, I was in court down in Atlanta County. I was approached by a bunch of the attorneys down there who indicated that their family members were going from Atlanta County all the way up to these outlets. And he said, it's going to kill the Atlantic City outlets. And he, and he complimented us on not only this development, but everything that this town has done in terms of the economic development. In response to what you said, um, instead of believing that I am not in favor of it and spinning that back at me. I'm asking my government who is responsible for taxation and where taxes go in this town what the benefit was to see if you would answer and what the justification of that is. You may convince me that it's good. I was at the Premium Outlet Mall the weekend that it opened and I also thought it was a phenomenal deal. It was good stores, there's still some to open. I want to know what the benefit is. You keep saying it was what attracted them. Well, they're here, they're open, they're making money, and they were not guaranteed a tax abatement. That's my question. You're going to take it away from them. What's the basis? No, I, again, it's an established program established by the state of New Jersey that we and all the other municipalities around us participate in. And there's a legal, Mr. Carlin can correct me if I'm wrong, the legal obligation on our part in this governing body approve that. So it's a commitment that's, uh, and again, you're answering it's part of my question. It's, it's legality. It's not even that. You, you, we made a commitment to them no. to offer this tax abatement. No. 
Okay, then how does that come about? Well, they, were, well, excuse me. they, they requested a while ago. Chuck Palumbo's had that for quite a while, several months. I guess it would be. If I can add to that, that, that ordinance has been on the books of uh, late 90s, Mr. Lechner. 1989. Oh, thank you. Late 80s. That was a good year for a lot of things happening. All right, Mr. Palumbo. All right, so why is it that with Mr. Palumbo haven't had that for quite some time? Given that they got the 60 days, why is this not approved before the stores had opened? Time wise, why, why did this take so long? You're going to have to contact Simon. I, I can't tell you why they haven't submitted their full application, but he has received preliminary information that's sufficient enough to try to obtain uh, a five-year commercial tax abatement. Okay. And again, it's, it's a question and answer. It's not whether I approve or disapprove. It's finding out what you believe. It's questioning your government. Uh, the, the last thing I'd like to say is um, on the night that I was not able to make the meeting, I watched... Uh, the live feed was in and out. It was horrible, but I watched a little bit better uh, uh, edition of it the following day. And I have to say, for what the people of that, that are going to watch this, um, there's an issue with audio. And in the opening statement that you make, you state that the recording device is going to be used and it will be clear and audible and that will be the the record and I can tell you most members that are sitting back with their microphone halfway up on their desk it's not clear and audible when it comes out to the uh, to the uh, live stream it is either you guys are not getting up to the microphone or maybe a little 21st century technology would maybe need to be upgraded for better audio because it, it's tough when I'm here it's one thing but it's not so easy listening to it on that uh, on the live stream just an observation thank you for my time Have a good evening is there anyone else mr. Kittles evening council Jim Kittles this aerial uh, follow-up on the premium outlets um, mr. Mercado you said that the Township will be receiving three hundred and ninety thousand dollars this year, twenty fifteen. Yes. Okay. Uh, of that three hundred ninety thousand dollars for the land, will the normal tax go against it? Like the schools will get that money, yes. the fire district will get yes. the money. It's the land. If the okay. land is, is there's no abatement on the land. Just the improvements. Okay. Thank the you. Fire district is that in Jim? Four. Blackwood four. Is there anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close the second public portion. Board of Directors. Mr. Lechner. I have nothing to report. Thank you. Deputy Chief Harkins. Nothing to report. Mr. Carlinger. Nothing to report. Mr. Campbell. Nothing to report. Mr. Carter. Nothing to report. Mr. Hutchison. Uh, briefly, the uh, outlet was spectacular. I, the first time I got over there was on Sunday. Walked around the parking lot, walked throughout the entire place. And I was just uh, amazed, and it was my wife's first time over there as well, and she was really proud. She was really proud that it was in Gloucester Township, and, um, you know, I can't say enough about how proud I am to be on this body um, approving things like that. And I brought up the, uh, the rehabilitation overlay zone uh, going up the corridor, uh, so it's a real good thing. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Ray and I go at it a little bit, but in a very friendly way, so please don't be put off by our exchanges. Thank you. Mr. Schmidt. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for your comments. Uh, I, too, am very proud of the outlets. Strato? I just wanted to add, in relation to the outlets, uh, it was very a very successful event. Uh, I was able to be there over the weekend that weekend it was awesome but also I know the American Cancer Society is reaching out to Simon they want to hold an event there that will pull um, people from Mercer County through Salem County that's how excited some of the residents of New Jersey are it wasn't because of myself being from Gloucester Township we were approached 
by other residents to host an event there. So uh, we are in the works of trying to work with them. So it is something that is uh, very well received by others and people do want to come to our township to see it. So congratulations on a job well done and thank you and have a good week. Mrs. Venters? Uh, same thing, I was at the outlets for the opening and then the fireworks. I haven't shopped yet, I'm sure that's coming. Um, my kids are back from vacation, so I'm sure we'll be there soon. Um, but it is, it's gorgeous. It's, it's kind of like you forget you're in Gloucester Township when you're there because it just doesn't seem like you're that close to home. But it is a very nice facility. And have a great night. A couple things. Uh, we are accepting applications or nominations for Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, which council will cel celebrate the second meeting in September. I believe it's the 28th, September 28th. Uh, those nominations uh, can be made online and they get forwarded to the clerk's office. Uh, the outlets, uh, this past week I was on vacation in uh, Rehoboth Beach. I've been going down there for 25 years with my family and they've had outlets there for about 23 of those 25 years. And the difference between, they have their parking in the middle of the outlets there and you'll get hit by a car if you're walking in those outlets here. And the difference between those and our outlets is that you can just walk. You're walking on the pavement there. You're not. There's. You're not fearful of any cars hitting you. Uh, your children are safe. Uh, the aesthetics, uh, the uh, landscaping and hardscaping that's been done there is fantastic. I know there are some challenges uh, with parking. It was the first weekend or the first week, uh, and, and some of the neighborhoods in the overflow. And I'm sure that. Uh, Deputy Chief Harkins and uh, our traffic division as we get closer to the holiday season we'll work closely with the folks at Simon Properties to alleviate some of those concerns. I know they were running, running a shuttle out of Cannon County Cops. Some people preferred the shuttle because it was just easier to get in and out using the shuttle. But um, over time those growing pains will alleviate some of those growing pains and we'll work closely uh, with Simon and our police department. Uh, with that, uh, have a good evening. I'll entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Have a good evening.